remember the back of our Savior Jesus Christ. We give God all the glory and the presence of God and the joy of the back of our Savior and manifest it in one of our lives. Let us pray, Jehovah. Jesus Christ, holy my Lord, most holy and everlasting Father, thank you once again for grace and mercy in allowing us to witness this day to remember the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord of heaven, let the purpose of his birth not be in vain in our lives. Let thy joy that was expressed by the angels continue to be with us for the remaining part of this year and into the next year. It was a revelation of the joy of Christmas today. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. And the first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 to 12. Isaiah 11, 1 to 12. And here we see the prophetic message about the Messiah that is coming to this earth. Um, what he will be like and what he will be doing. What he will be coming to do. So this message can be titled The Appearance of a Savior. And it says, There shall come forth a roar out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. So God always speaks in parables, and this picture of parable is referring to a tree or a plant. And it says, This plant, the stem of that plant is Jesse. Yes, it is the grandfather of King David. And it says, out of this stem, a branch shall grow out of its roots. That was Jesse was the stem, then Jesse had a root in the had a root, and that's King David. And then King David, out of King David came a branch. See? That what describes it. Generations. What about you? I come from a rod out of the stem of Jesse. That rod is in David. And a branch out of the roots of this rod. You know, Jesus did not descend directly from King David. It was seven generations afterwards. Fourteen generations, actually. The book of Matthew describes that. Now, out of those descendants of King David came. Lord Jesus Christ. You know, frequently our Lord Jesus Christ is described as the son of David. Remember when the black Bartholomew saw him, he said, Son of David, have mercy on me. See, in the Bible, when they say son of David, it don't mean the direct son, it means the descendant of King David. See, so already the prophet Isaiah was given this prophetic message by God and he shared it. That I shall become a branch. That branch is capitalized. Maybe this is just, maybe this is no ordinary branch. It's a branch from heaven. It shall go out of its roots of King David. Let's go to Jeremiah 23, verse 5. And Zechariah 3 8. Zechariah 3 8 says that here now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and the fellow that sit before thee, for they are men under that. For behold, I bring forth my servant the branch. My servant the branch. So Jesus Christ is that branch that grew out of the roots of King David. Do you imagine the previous five? Behold, yes. the days are coming, yes. says the Lord, mm -hmm. that I will raise to David a branch yes. of righteousness. Mm -hmm. The king shall reign and prosper mm -hmm. and execute judgment mm -hmm. and righteousness in the earth. That's it. And it continues says, In his days, Judas shall be saved, and Judas shall be well saved. And this is his name that the Christ shall be called the Lord and righteousness, which is interpreted Jehovah says, Kill me. Says, Kill me. Jehovah says, Kill me. So Jesus Christ is that branch, is that Messiah. I'm celebrating his birth today, and we're just going back to see that these are prophesied hundreds of years before he was born. That that will come, this branch, a savior out of the lineage of David. And it says, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the 
fear of the Lord. So those are the seven spirits of God that are described in this passage. This branch that is prophesied to come to have the full complement of the power of God in his life. Jesus Christ himself said that all power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. That's what he said. And the book of John says his power is no limits to the power given to the Lord Jesus Christ. See? That's the spirit of the Lord. Go to Isaiah 42, verse 1, Matthew 3, 16. And John 1, 32. Isaiah 42, verse 1. Says, Behold my servant, whom I uphold my elect, in whom my soul delighted, and put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. And he shall bring fairness. Equity to be get out of the fairness of the children, fear the fact of priority. Matthew 3.16, John 1.32. Matthew 3.16. Yes. When he had been baptized, yes. Jesus came up immediately mm-hmm. from the water. Yes. And behold, the heavens were opened. Yes. Mm-hmm. And he saw the Spirit of God descending mm-hmm. by the door That's and it. alighting upon him. That's it. And it says, John 1.32 says, uh, and John the Arab was saying, I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove and that water from him. And I knew him not, for he that sent to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descend and remain from him. The same is he who baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw him there, but this is the Son of God. So, and this Spirit of the Lord, this seven spirits, Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of Wisdom and understanding. Let me get three. The spirit of counsel and might. Might is power. The spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. All those spirits, the full spirit of God, resting on the Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning that if you are a follower of Him, you will have one or two of the spirits on you, guiding and guiding you to lead you into His kingdom. Said, and this priest shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. What does that mean? That means he would naturally fear the Lord. That would be his nature. He would not want to sin. It is the common human nature. So Jesus had a godly nature in him, not the human nature. In any case, he wasn't born of a man or a woman. He came. The Holy Ghost was his dad, did not have a human dad. Mary was just a surrogate mom. Some people think that Mary had a part in Jesus. No. Mary just carried it out from the womb. Was, the, the, the oven, the infant was deposited in the womb of Mary. And Mary just carried that baby and delivered the baby. Mary had no part, there is no human part. To the body of Jesus, all from heaven. You see, nowadays we have some again moms who do it for a living. They carry people's pregnancies for them and they pay them huge sums of money 40,000, 70,000 to carry the baby to birth and deliver the babies. And after that, the parents come to carry and take the babies. So it is possible. Surrogate mother would have been in existence from the time of Mary, mother of Jesus Christ. So this period will make it. Fear the Lord. We should have quick understanding. A deep fear of the Lord will be in. This is why Jesus Christ never sinned. Because that fear will stay was resting on him. And he says, He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, the very poor after the hearing of his ears. Jesus Christ never said the same thing. He said, I don't judge according to what I see, but I judge according to what the Father tells me. So most of us judge people by what we see or we hear about them. No, this guy never did that. If that was the case, he would have gone to the house of uh, you know, so many people who had killed prostitutes and the house of Zacchaeus because everybody hated Zacchaeus because he was a sinner and corrupt tax collector. But he just went to eat in his house. See, because he saw something. Uh, what do you see in Zacchaeus? And he 
Nicht? Wenn die Seite es haben nicht, das kommt ins Haus zu sehen. So, do I like to, if we have this thing with God in us, we will not judge people because of their parents, when we hear about them, when we see about them. You remember when God sent Samuel from the Son to anoint one of the sons of Jesse, the next king of Israel, when Samuel saw Eliab, he said, Oh, this must be the one. Why? Because he judged Eliab as a parent. He was tall and handsome and said, This must be the king. And God said, No, I have rejected him. The man judges by outside appearance, but I judge by the hearts. I judge by the hearts. He said, Of righteousness shall he judge the poor, and I reform with equity for the need of the act. And shall smite the act of the world of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips and his blade of the king. That is the word of God shall be upon him. And with that word he will judge the nations. First of all, the righteousness shall be judged before. That is the righteousness of God, the right standards of God's of God's life. So that's what he will use to judge the poor. The poor are the people who are sorry for their sins. He will judge them the righteous standards of God. I reprove that means rebuke the need of the act, rebuke the equity, the need to be judged fairly. You know, our God is a fair God. Many of us don't know this God is sad. If you look in the word of God, you see that God is extremely fair. There are so many examples. Um, well, one good example comes to mind is when uh, Jacob walked for seven years. Rachel, and on the night of his marriage, he was giving another woman, take Rachel's sister Leah, to be his wife. Now, the Bible says Leah had eyes that did not work properly, so he didn't like Leah because he judged by the parents. Now, because he hated Leah and wanted Rachel, he for another seven years for him and his uncle. Now, what the Bible says that God saw that that Jacob like there. And you know what God did? God closed the womb of Rachel so that Rachel was barren. They had a first, second, third, fourth, and it was the fifth child before God opened the womb of Rachel to have Joseph. So this God is very fair. Don't think you can get into anything. He sees everything you do. Now, to everybody, of course, people might have known that but God saw it. And God said, This is not fair. This poor girl was given to you as a wife. She had no hand in the matter. The least you could do is help, is, you know, love her. At least now she's your wife. It got so bad that Leah had to be frightened richer to sleep with her husband. That was how bad the hatred was. So, you know, God sees everything you do. There's nothing hidden that he doesn't see. And you and I have to give a thought for every thought, not even action, every thought you think in your heart, you are going to give a thought for it. So it says that joy and righteousness, the poor, and the poor, the people with fairness, the need of the heart, the need that the people who are oppressed, who are going to fight for them, can smile the heart with the rod of his mouth, and with his word. You know, he told the Pharisees that the word is what will judge you. Malachi 4 verse 6. 2 Thessalonians 2 8. And Revelation 19 verse 11. So, the Savior is a righteous judge. He's very fair to everyone. He does not give right to the rich or oppress the poor. No, that is not God. It's all of us. God, we are equal in sight. There is no favoritism with God. Revelation 19, 11, 2 Thessalonians 2, 8, Malachi 4, 6. Yes. And he will turn the heart of the father mm -hmm. to the children, mm -hmm. and the hearts of the children to their fathers. That's it. Let I come and strike the heart of the cost. That's it. So that was from Sarah, from the Malachi already. He turned the heart of children and fathers and vice versa. And Revelation 19 11 says, I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat on the horse was called Faithful and True. 
and in Russia says he got George and me here. Meaning that if you live a righteous life, and what does righteousness mean? What does it mean? It means living according to God's standards, not according to my standards. Most of us in this world live our life according to my standards. How? What we see on television, what we read in the papers, everybody's doing it. Oh, let's join the modern rights. Like today, nowadays, I, I watch a, a, a short video clip of what's happened. This man, he said he was leaving America. And somebody asked him, ah, why? Why are you leaving America? He said, about 200 years ago, if you were homosexual, uh, you were caught out and killed instantly. They found you. Then he said, about 100 years ago, uh, they would find you 200 pounds. Then, 50 years ago, uh, they would uh, caution you. He said, I'm living before the main homosexuality of Wall Street. <laughs> That's what the man said. He said, I don't want to wait to the living of Wall Street. So it just shows you that most the society lives with certain standards. But Jesus did not do that. And we should not do that. We should live our lives according to the Bible. When God says this is wrong, it is wrong. Regardless of what people outside us see. See, we should not judge our life by God's standards or by God's standards. Then, in righteousness shall be, righteousness shall be the guide of his noise. It will be the guide of his noise what you hold, hold your, 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 your garden together. What makes you look smart, you can walk freely. If you don't have a garden, then you stumble. So, he said, this righteousness shall be the guide of the strength of his standing. That's what will be. Right, righteousness will be that strength. And faithfulness, the God of his radiance, again, his heart. He lays in the heart. So Jesus, our Lord, was righteous and faithful. Faithful means he will not disappoint. He will not fail. Most of us make promises only to be broken afterwards. So man's word are totally on the line. Where God, whatever he says, he will bring to God. Ephesians 6, verse 14. Ephesians 6, 14. So you can trust the word of God. The Bible is the inerrant word of God, isn't without error. You can base your life on it. You don't have to doubt it or, or, or question it. You can base your life. So our Lord Jesus Christ is righteous and faithful. Because of the righteousness, you can make war and overcome. You too, if your life is righteous and full of righteous deeds, godless deeds, holiness, you would overcome your enemies, your adversaries. Righteousness itself is a very strong, powerful force to overcome the force of darkness because light always overcomes darkness. Ephesians 6 14. Ephesians 6 14. Yes. Stand therefore. Yes. Be there in your ways to escape. Uh huh. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Yes. And now we show the and so it describes this coming Messiah, our Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ, as the branch at the roots of David, with the seventh spirit of the Lord of him, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and light, he can find. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. All those seven spirits abide in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that, he had an innate, inherent fear of the Lord, so that he did not sin. He was not prone to sin, like you and I. We human beings on this earth, you don't have to teach a human being to lie. Just go and say two year old or three year old and put a set of cookies on the table. He will take this and when you ask him, who took these cookies? I don't know. <laughs> he just deny it automatically because there is an inherent tendency in human beings to lie and to do something on him. This is evil. This is why you are not to be born again because the way you are born, there's no way you can make the kingdom of heaven. 
Because that's inside you, it's sin, it's innate inside you, the sin of Adam is inside you and I. You have been born again in the Spirit of God. But Jesus was not like that. He had the fear of the Lord in him. And he did not sin. He was the only human being that never sinned. And because of his righteous life, he could overcome the force of darkness and defeat them. And with meekness, he enjoyed the poor as well. And then it goes on to the next few verses how in the millennium reign of Christ, when Christ comes back to reign, so the wolf shall dwell with the lamb. You know, now the wolf cannot dwell with the lamb because of the sinfulness of this world. The wolf eats the lamb for food. But in that time, the wolf will live with the lamb, and the lamb shall lie down with the king. Again, the contrast which is not possible today. But in that day, then of Christ, when Christ comes back to this earth ready for a thousand years, the lion will lie with the key and the cow and the young lion coming together, and then the child shall lead them. Now it goes on to say the cow and the bear shall feed, again, the bear feeds on the cow, the young ones shall lie down together, the man shall eat straw like the ox. <laughs> Have you ever seen the lion eating straw like the ox? No. But it will happen in the millennium of Christ, there will be complete peace at that time. When they have a complete peace on this earth, that there's no more killing, no more flying, no more disaster, no more rain, all these bad things will stop. For 1,000 years, there will be complete peace on this earth. Can you imagine that? It's important to imagine because now everything is dark and bad. Say that the little child shall play in the hole of the cobra, and the little child shall put his hand on the his bed, he's a very, very venomous snake. And they will not harm the children. It is sin that causes death and destruction. Where there is no sin, there is no death, no destruction. A lot will happen. Satan will be in prison for 1,000 years. And because he's in prison, he will not tempt men, he will not deceive men. So men will naturally leave how God planned for them in the head of the year. They will complete peace. They are not hot or destroyed in the holy mountain, but they ask for the full knowledge of the Lord. And the world has come on the sea. That the extreme knowledge all over the earth. And that day shall be the root of Jesse, which has time for a sign for the people, so it shall be. To each and the Gentiles say, This is what's happening now. You and I are the Gentiles because we are not the only Jews. So we are seeking our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 15, verse 10. This is one of the prophecies given about Lord Jesus Christ. That we, Gentiles, are seeking. And that's what I said. His rest shall be glorious. Hebrew 4 verse 1. We need to rest in our Lord Jesus Christ. Say, Come unto me, all you that live and have a baby, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and love unto me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my body is light. Matthew 11, 30, 31. Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4, verse 1, Romans 15, verse 10. Hebrews 4, verse 1, yes. Therefore, since you have promised the means of entering his rest, let us regard, let any one of you seem to have come short of it. So the first question is, are you resting in the promises of God? Jesus Christ already gave you the rest. Are you resting in him, or are you still striving in your own power, in your own strength? Romans 15, verse 10. 15, verse 10. Yes. And again it says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, and Uh-huh. And again, praise the Lord, all the Gentiles. Yes. Lord, in him, all his people. That's it. Say to him, shall the Gentiles say, Jesus is waiting. He said, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden. Are you labor and heavy laden in your life? You've been struggling in your own, trying to cope with the problems, and it's getting too much. Jesus is waiting for you to surrender and to cast all your anxieties and pain to him. That's why he went to the cross to do that thing. You know, and it says as you come to pass, that like that day the Lord has set his hand again several times to recover the remnants of his people from Assyria, Egypt, Pamphos, Kosh, and Ethiopia, Sinai, Tyre, Hama. She has sent the sign of the nations, she has sent all the outcasts of Israel and gathered together with the spies of Judah and the four corners of the earth. 
They gave this professor's book to Phil right now. All the Jews from all over the world are coming back to Israel as a special lands group to the area. So pray for them. They are built buildings for them. You, if you have Jewish ancestry, you can claim the Jewish roots by going to a Jewish embassy and they'll fly you back to Israel. You want to go back. You see? So all these promises are being fulfilled. The Bible is completely true. And you and I are not God enough of what he did by sending Jesus Christ to this earth. And that's what we're going to read in the next passage. Uh, that's called Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. And it describes what happened at the bar of our Savior Jesus Christ. It says that it came to pass in those days that there was a decree sent up of Caesar Augustus, and all the world were taxed. All the world, because the owners were ruling the world at that time. And it says, all want to be taxed, everyone in his own city. That means they have to register their names so that they can pay their appropriate taxes. If you didn't, if you are not registered, you can penalized severely. St. Joseph went from Galilee to Nazareth, the city of David, that means Bethlehem. That's where he went to register because he came from the village of David. Those are the roots. And he came to the tax of Mary. He's a spouse child. Mary had been, of course, you know, Mary had been given to him as his wife to marry. And in those days, usually they give the uh, girls to the men at around the age of 10 years. Around 10 years, they very young. And the men don't do anything with them until they're mature enough, but they know that this girl, in another four or five years, is going to be my future wife. So Mary had been given to Joseph and his future wife. And uh, but you know what happened that even before anything was done between them, Mary was impregnated by the Holy Ghost. It takes a lot of faith for a man to believe your spouse wife is pregnant with the baby of the Holy Ghost. But God gave you so much faith to believe it. It has never happened again. That was called the Immaculate Conception. That means the perfect conception. No human sin. Jesus Christ. So when they went to the tax, it says Mary went with Joseph, both of them, but she was already heavy, the child, close to nine months. And we had imagined going to travel that distance. Maybe she was in a donkey, we don't know, but or maybe she was walking, but the journey was too much for her. Kind of put her into labor. And says that so it was that while they were there, they did not accomplish that she should be delivered. She went into labor. This is not surprising. Many men go into labor while shopping, while going to the market, while traveling, because of the stress prompts and, and you know, encourages the devil to start. So, and says that this is what for that firstborn son, and she ran and swore him close. What does that mean? It means rats. One, they did not prepare to have a baby. Very probably. They just went to the taxes. Two, there was no room in the hotel. The only place they could find for this young girl who was having a baby was in a manger. Do you know what a manger is? It is where they put the animals and their poo poo and their excreta and all those bad things. That was the only room. You have to ask, did anybody even give them a space in the house? Well, one, it was very urgent. Two, maybe there was nobody, I don't know. But I know Jesus Christ was born in a manger, the lowest of the low. The housing for the donkeys and asses, for animals, an animal house. That's where Jesus Christ was born. And it was rat, rat, rat. There was no decent hotel room. No park view hospital, no special nurses or midwives. She had to be herself in a manger, surrounded by asses and donkeys, and the smell of their excreta. That was how he was born. What I want to tell you, your back does not determine your future. You hear me? The family you are born in, the way you are born, does not determine your future. 
Jesus Christ, our Creator and Maker, was born in nature, surrounded by rats and animals. Can you imagine that? Say, oh, well, yes. To show you that God is a God of wonders. So she brought her husband Sarah in rags and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. There was no room for them in the inn. There was no choice. Either she had to take them on the road or they could be put some space in that manger. So they could put you you know, the, the garage for the animals. And you have to leave it there and there's no space behind. She had no choice. She was slippery. I don't know whether it's been there ever been labor. <laughs> it's very painful. Very uncomfortable, and you just want to get rid of the baby. It doesn't matter. I have the baby here. With our husband and new wife, the baby was born. The baby goes through. Baby Jesus, the Son of God, surrounded by animals, poo and animal smells. Yeah? And it says, at the time the baby was born, let's go to Isaiah 53, verse 2. 7 Corinthians 4, verse 4. And then you know the picture of your Savior, his origin, how humble they were as the Son of God. You think because you're born in a poor family that you can't achieve anything? No, that's not true. Look at Jesus. We are still talking about him today. Look at the way he was born. But this is I said, oh, I've born in India that I can't handle that amount of anything. Well, he amounted a lot. So that one has four for Isaiah 53, verse 2. Isaiah 53. Yes. For you shall grow up uh-huh. before him. Yes. As a tender plant. Uh-huh. And as a root. Yes. Out of the dry ground. That's it. He has no form or covenant. Uh-huh. And when we see him, yes. there is no beauty uh-huh. that we should desire him. Mm-hmm. You see, there is no beauty. Many of us think of Jesus, so he uses pictures. But if you really knew how Jesus looked, you would never, ever think that this is the Son of God. Because there was nothing about him that made you think of You say, oh, something was very tall, very handsome. No, 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 nothing like that. And yet, you remove that into the power of God, not his kind of appearance or the nature. It's what God will do in your life. Seven point as four as four. And that's it. Four by four. Whose man the God of this age is as blinded? Mm-hmm. Who do not believe? Let the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, yes. who is the image of God, mm-hmm. to shine on them. That's it. To be blinded. Many people don't see Jesus. The Jews didn't see him as a savior. They say, how can this man save us? You know, we know him, he was born. Look, we know his mom, we know his brothers, and he sees a savior. How does he save me? See? They, they, they were offended at him because of his origins, because they didn't see. They didn't see the truth in the spirits. And maybe you are like that. They're judging people and their parents about how much money they have, uh, how, how big their houses are. No. Don't judge their parents. Even like Jesus, judge at the Spirit of God. And it says, at the time I was born, there was, there was shepherds in the country abiding the field by night, watching over the flock by night. Like the Hindu one, the pious the idea that Jesus was born in the seventh and the fifth, the born in Israel, there is no human way shepherds would be out at night with the sheep. No. That only happens in the summer months because it's extremely cold there at that time. And no sheep would definitely be out at that other time. So it doesn't matter if I said the president of Babylon is doing that again, it doesn't matter if I said again, but, but these shepherds were keeping that up by light, and suddenly the angel of God came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were very afraid. Well, if you just saw the angel of the Lord, you would be afraid, because of the special aura and fear around them. The glory of the Lord they carried would make you fall down and worship and bow down before them. And the angel said to them, Fear not, because they knew they were afraid. So, for behold, I bring good tidings of great joy. Please note, good tidings of great joy. That's a double amplification. Good tidings 
That's good news of great joy. So joy and good news combined is what they brought to them. This shall be to all people, listeners, to all people, not only the Christians, not only to Muslims, not only Hindus, it's to everyone. Jesus Christ came for everyone. Maybe they are mostly watching from reaching me. Maybe they are, they are Hindu. Maybe you are Rastafarian. Jesus Christ came for you. Don't say, oh, it's only for the Christians. No. Whatever religion you are, he came for you. Are you going to receive him? As I ask you, verse 2. Genesis 12, verse 3. He said, to all, this good news is to all people. White or black, red or yellow, Amen. Nigerian, American, Australian, Japanese, Indian, names. Jesus Christ came for all of us. What are you going to do with Jesus today? Are you going to keep on reducing him? He's already done the work for you. Are you going to keep on rejecting him or are you going to receive him today? Alright? Genesis yes, 12 3. Yes. Yes. And the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established mm -hmm. on the top of the mountain. The mountain, yes. Shall be exalted mm -hmm. above the hills. And six. And all nations shall flow to it. That is it. And that's exactly what is happening right now. Genesis 12 verse 3. I will bless those who bless you. Mm -hmm. And I will cause him to yes. cause you. That's it. And in you, mm -hmm. all the families of the earth. Yes, see, all the families. See, he didn't say only Christians. He didn't say only Christians. He didn't say only Pentecostals or Methodists or CAC or MFM. No, he said all peoples. You know, you'll be surprised when you get there when you see Muslims and other faiths there. Say, eh? How did you make it here? He said, I believe in Jesus. See, Jesus Christ came for all people. All families, regardless of your color, your religion, your race, it doesn't matter. He died for every one of us. He made it possible for all the ones and we should all receive him. And he says, so he brought them great tidings, the good tidings of great joy to all peoples and said, unto you is born this day the city of David, the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The reason why the Angels were so happy and he told them the good news because a savior had been born, which is Christ. What does that mean? It means this is the anointed one of God that we prophesied from time immemorial that is going to come to save the people. The Christ means the anointed one of God for the Christians. That a savior has been born today, and this savior is the anointed of God. Philippians 2 11. Which is Christ the Lord. This Savior, born in the city of David, is Christ the Lord. Philippians 2, verse 11. It's a very important note because many people think, oh, you Christians believe in Jesus, we don't believe in Jesus. No, 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 forget about that. Jesus is for everyone, Christian or not. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God the Father. And suddenly there was, and this has been signed to you. It's a kind of baby rap in swollen clothes. And as I said, that means that just beautiful words means rats lying in a manger, a manger where the animals is the animals tech, animals food, the house. Okay? Suddenly there was the angel of the month of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and a man peace would will towards me. So we are praising God. And say, because of this event, God has brought peace, and in this event shows the goodwill of God to men. You see, the goodwill of God to men. That's what the Bible just means. Ephesians 2 4 7. Ephesians 2 4 7. So, how is that mean peace? Because Jesus Christ came to die for my sins and your sins, and by that death, he is reconciled to my life to God. He has brought peace between God and man. Because God is angry at sin, and all humanity have sinned against God. So when Jesus came, 
that the sacrifice for our sins, be paid for my sins and your sins, and that we have peace between me and God. This is what Jesus Christ is called the Prince of Peace. Okay? Ephesians 2, 4, 7. 7 Corinthians 2, 16. 2, 4. 2, 4 and 7. But God, mm -hmm. who is rich in mercy, yes. because of his great love, mm -hmm. is with his love of us. Yes. Because of his great love. That is his good will. That's why he sent Jesus. Go on. That in the ages to come, yes. he might show the exceeding riches uh -huh. of his grace. Yes. In his kindness. Uh -huh. Jesus, you see? It is God's kindness and mercy that brought Jesus Christ to this Because before Jesus came, Satan was rolling, doing everything he wanted, humanity, keeping as he wanted, nobody could face him. That was no plan of salvation. Nobody, in fact, heaven was only opened after Jesus died and rose up. Before then, all the saints, Moses, Jeremiah, they were locked up because of their sins. And Jesus went to hell, prayed to them, and took them along with them to paradise. So, you know, this is why it was such a great news because they began to say, at last, a way had been made for man to come back to God. See? Now, so we told them about the good will of God towards men, and as the angels were gone away from them to heaven, the shepherd said, Let's now go to Matthew and see this thing which come to pass. The Lord has made known to us and came to us, and Mary Joseph, and the dead man in nature. And when they had seen it, they made that God the same to what the Lord brought. So Mary kept all these things in her heart. Of course, she could not imagine the magnitude of the child's life. Remember that Mary was a virgin, a pure virgin, before she had this baby. And there's no human way she could have known that she was giving birth to our Savior. Wow, what a revelation! Many of you belong to things that worship holy Mary. Let me just tell you right now, that's a serious sin against God. You are committing idolatry. You that go and bow down before statues, and pray to all these saints and all these things, you are guilty of committing idolatry. Idolatry before God. You better repent. Turn away from it. Only Jesus is worthy to be worshipped. He's the only one that died. To save us is his blood that saved you, you and I. Mary did not die for anybody. Yes, she was holy and pure. Yes, she was kind of body to carry the baby Jesus. But that's it. She had other children outside Jesus. She had five other children. Jesus was not her only child. So don't start worshiping Mary. And Mary is not the mother of God. God has a mother. She has a human component to carry the baby, yes. Jesus made Mary, Jesus the creator. Alright? People on the cross said, when we talked to John, he said, John, that this woman, the fact that the woman leads to the same mother. Jesus never called Mary her mother, her mother. Not once in the gospels. That's his woman. Look at your son. Son, look at him. Look at your real mother. So is John the Baptist. Alright, so thank God for this revelation. And if you're watching me, and you have not yet surrendered your life to Christ. Don't delay your evangelism because as we're celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, remember the reason he came to this earth was to die. He came to die to save you and I from our sins and give us a chance to be with God in heaven. Don't delay your evangelism. Coming to church does not mean you're saved. Doing good works does not qualify you for heaven. You cannot drive your way to heaven buying a bus for the church or even building a building, a building for the church does not mean you are going to go to heaven. You must be saved. You must receive Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior. Alright? So if you are ready, just say this simple prayer to me, Lord Jesus. I've sinned against God and man. I'm sorry for my sins. Have mercy. Forgive me my sins today. Wash my sins with your precious blood. Make me holy and pure. Come inside my heart and begin to rule and reign over my life. Take my name from the book of the dead and write my name in the book of life. And I promise to 
sad for all the days of my life. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And that's it. If you said that prayer in an you are saved because that says that we are now to confess his lordship and with a heart to confess his righteousness. Let us pray to Jehovah. Jesus Christ, God of all God, we thank you for the words of Christ to us today. We thank you for the opportunity to celebrate the goodwill of God towards men and the peace he has brought to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let his back not be in vain our lives. Let the purpose of his back be fulfilled in all our lives. In Jesus' mighty and matters of our prayer. Amen. 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 And that's it for today. Make sure you read these passages at length. You dwell on it, you feed on it, and it will produce wonderful fruits in your life. And God will manifest himself to you. Thank you. And thank you for the Thanks, God.